Today, every day, small cap investors visit Agoracom knowing this is the day to discover the world's next great company to have their dreams come true. That's why I take to the open road to find them, to tell their stories, to engage them, to bring them to life because they want to connect with you from your office, your phone, your home, anywhere. Agoracom, find your dream. Welcome to Agoracom Q&A, a production which we allow shareholders to ask their questions and have our executives answer via video. With us today, we're ecstatic to have him back, Peter Pascali, President and CEO of Pyro Genesis, the $300 million company trading on the TSX Venture and the stock symbol PYR in the US, PYRNF, and for our friends in Europe, 8PY on Frankfurt. For those of you who are new to the story, I'm going to give a very brief outline because the Q&A today but Pyrogenesis is a multiple TSX Venture 50 company. Uh, they're a world leader in advanced plasma processes. They're achieving global success in multiple applications with some of the world's biggest companies and organizations. Now, more than just lip service, just in 2020, the company scored a $20 million contract, one of the biggest high-tech aluminum smelters in the world that could expand to $55 million over the next few years, a $30 million backlog, and that doesn't even include a multi-million dollar contract that's expected from the U.S. Navy for two more aircraft carriers uh, that's expected imminently. Peter, welcome back, my friend. Thanks, George, and what an introduction. Thank you very much. Hey, I was wondering if it was me <laughs> that you're describing. You deserve it, right? I know it's hard to believe probably uh, what Power of Jazz has been able to do so far, even for someone like you, but uh, you guys deserve it. Before we go into the Q&A, uh, and we got great questions from everyone. I'm going to thank them all for that in a bit. Peter, how do you guys feel, man? Uh, take your victory lap. How's that, how's how's the morale? How's everyone feeling at Pyro? Well, we're we're not we're not we're not we haven't even begun yet, George. I mean, basically, I I, I think that without sounding too arrogant, I I think the market because of the COVID situation and people had the time to analyze us and look at us and and do their real due diligence had time. I think the the market's catching up to us. I, I don't think it's really about one particular press release or or you know, we found right. some sort of vaccination or something. It's got to do with it's who we are and what we've been doing as a team. The whole team is excited because, uh, George, as you can as you can may very well appreciate, is you know when you when you're, you're banging on doors and telling people what you're doing, what you're doing, and it, finally someone opens the door and says, "Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it," and, and then someone else says, "I get it." And someone else, it's it's really that's that's very very uh, satisfying. And the fact that it, it, it actually has a financial repercussions for other people and investors uh, and gives us a currency in which to, to do things with and also to uh, have much, a, lot of, a lot of credibility in front of potential clients with a, a higher market cap. Uh, sure. it's, it's, it's really been a satisfying couple of months, particularly since uh, George has been a really tough three months for people. And without going down too much of a side path that we get a lot of hear a lot of stories about how people uh, portfolios were, were were saved by pyrogenesis or actually gave them a reason to wake up in the morning and you know that's the, that's another little bit of silver lining around the cloud that's that that's that, that we're very happy at pyro to be able to uh, to provide to the marketplace yeah that's for sure that's for sure you've done wonders for everyone and you know what they deserve it the shareholders who are watching right now via video or listening via podcast, remember you can get us on podcast, Google, Spotify, et cetera, Apple, et cetera, and so on. Uh, they've been, most of them been loyal to Pyro, believing in you for the you know, last 12, 24, 36 months, 48 months even, and well rewarded. And congratulations to And everyone. my longest, most patient investor, <laughs> my son who bought a three buck, <laughs> has has called me and said he's he's still hanging in there and he's got uh, he's got a lot of co uh, confidence that we're gonna we're gonna hit the three dollar mark you know so he'll be ha he'll be happy too hopefully tell soon. Everyone, tell everyone at home might not have seen the last interview the how why he's your longest and most loyal what happened on the very first day of your trading. You always repeat it. Uh, give everyone the Coles notes. Okay, I'm really quickly, my, uh, my son is very very young. He was uh, he was following me going public and things like that and very young, like under ten years old and. 
and I, I explained what going public was with a Kool-Aid stand and how you, you might raise capital to buy more Kool-Aid stands and make money. So he got the concept of shares and, and, and what's happening. And he's in the back of his mom's car going to school the day we we're, were going to go public. And he, uh, he says, mom, wouldn't it be great if, if we got some of dad's shares? And his mom said, okay, sure. You know, no, that sounds like an interesting idea. So apparently she put an order, a market order, because she was busy and she didn't want to be bothered with it. You know, boom, 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 a market order. Bang, it goes from uh, open to three bucks. She was the first and <laughs> only purchase at three bucks. And I think it was like it started, it opened at 80 cents. It, it opened, it's supposed to open at 80, it went bang right to three. Um. I'm, I'm uh, this part I didn't tell you, I'm on the phone to my banker, really picked, pissed off because he's, he did a deal at 80 cents and, and the first one's at three bucks. So I, I you know, I, I didn't get a good price from him. And at the same time, IROC is calling me wondering who the hell is this person who seems to be related to me buying. <laughs> uh, anyways, it, it all got sorted out and uh, he ended up with the first order at three bucks and he's never that's sold. A, that's a classic story, man. So if anybody wants to complain of being a long-term holder, He's got he's, it up on everybody. Well, you know, he's he's almost there right now. So yeah. No, congratulations. So let's go. Let's get to these great questions. Look, thanks to everyone. We yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, Peter did his interview yesterday with Proactive, and that was more of an informational, great informational interview. So there's no point in doing another one with Agoracom. So we thought, what would be better than to we do this every once in a while, but open up the floor to the investors. You guys deserve it uh, to ask your questions have Peter respond to you directly. And that would be a lot more helpful and a lot more fun, right? So- And faster than writing out the responses on Goracom late at night. <laughs> depending on how long you babble. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we'll, we'll, you'll ask every question if you can, George. Even if we can't answer, we'll explain Every why. single one. Okay. Every single one that was posted, even, even one that made it in over the wire, we still went and included it. So, oh. you know, we figured that's the least we could do, right? Okay. First question comes from member moi. Moi. <laughs> Peter, one, how long does it take to build the plasma torch to replace an oil burner? So to build a plasma torch doesn't matter what we're doing with it. It's the same amount of time, you know, no matter what you're going to do with the plasma torch. So if you, um, if, if you had absolutely no inkling that you were going to have an order and you started from scratch to order the stuff and assemble it, uh, my guess would take somewhere in the order of six months. My guess. Wow. Uh, yeah, but um, the, the, the footnote here is actually only takes about a month. Uh, if you have all the pieces in your facility, which yeah, because you're would, which, which what we would do if we had huge orders for plasma torches, we'd order like, you know, a hundred of everything or whatever it happens to be, bring them in. And, and then as the orders come in, process them. I mean, it, we wouldn't go out and make one plasma torch and then start again, make another plasma torch. So, the very first one, I mean, if we're going to production, it would be that. But I, I'd suggest to you, if you want to figure out how long it takes to make a plasma torch, one month is, is, a, good, is a good roundabout number. And how long, moi is also asking, how long does it take to install slash replace an oil burner with a plasma torch? So thanks, thanks, moi. Those are two very good questions. Um, it'll take a couple of weeks. That's fast. It's very simple. Yeah. Very yeah, simple. You would think that's a major uh, undertaking, right? No. So simple. that's actually a good sign. Yeah. In this particular instance, I think Ma was talking about, you know, iron ore pelletization to replace a, a, a burner with a torch. Very simple. In fact, um, when we did uh, our, 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 our deal with Sweden, the operators were very impressed about how, how easily it was to put a plasma torch in and out. Yeah, hopefully one day, you know, uh, we'll be able to see like a time-lapse video. That would be really interesting. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That's actually interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I'm always thinking visual, right? It's great yeah. for the shareholders and of the world to actually see what it looks like. That's interesting. Well, thanks for those two questions. Next one up thanks is well. Top Seeker. Oh, Top Seeker. Who says, myself and more than a few, I don't know why that's in the, you know, in, in quotes, but, <laughs> and a few others are very much looking forward to your upcoming informative Q&A on Agoracom. Thank you in advance for making the time and keeping us uh, in the loop as Pyro moves forward. Thank you very welcome. much, Bob So, in the meantime, it says, I was thinking, or she, I was thinking about further possible benefits of using Plasma Torch 
versus fossil fuel burners. So what they're asking is one, is there reduced downtime for the kiln furnace, for the kiln or furnace uh, due to greater heating efficiencies using plasma torch versus fossil fuel burners when bringing the kiln slash furnace down and back up to full operation? Oh, I see what he's saying. Um, he's assuming that you have to shut everything down. Uh, okay, so uh, top secret, I'm going to assume that, uh, you're, uh, something to your cry. I may be wrong. I apologize in advance. But I think what you're assuming is that we have to shut down the plant, the, the, the whole plant. And, and yeah, I might assume burners. that too. Um, actually, that's not what happens. These plants, the, the plants that we're talking, they never shut down, uh, really. Uh, so what we do is we go in and we take out the, the burner and put in our torch as it's operating. Um, even though there's a two-week lag back, there, even though right? there's a two-week lag there, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't disrupt their operations at all? Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I mean, it, you're taking a burner out and you're putting, you know, so, so I guess it's a, the disruption is not really a disruption. It's just, that's what you do. You don't have to shut the thing down. Okay. Which is interesting because um, it's very interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. Well, that makes it a lot easier. You don't, have to, shut down, you don't have to shut down plants. You don't have to, you just, as you get the torch, boom, bam, boom. The next one, next one, next one, next one. Well, I'm telling you what I have the feeling I'm getting already is uh, it's such an easy process. It takes a month to, you know, to, to build one. Uh, the, it takes two weeks to switch one in and out. There's no downtime to the customer. So, so far, this, sound, this sounds even, even better than expected. The second question from Top Secret. Yeah, I, I get giddy when I think about it, George, because quite frankly, it's, it's simple. I think, so people are looking for a solution. Fill in the blank what it is. Is it greenhouse gases? Is it... Uh, um, Penalties? Is it social? You know, uh, being socially con uh, uh, professional about the, the problems. It's a, at a readily available bolt-on replacement um, that doesn't impact their operations and has significant greenhouse gas reductions. I mean, it's made in heaven, and we have the patent on it. The, if to take a plasma torch and put it into an iron ore pelletization process like we were describing, we have the patent on it. It's not just a new one. It's been a patent we've had out there for some time. Very exciting. Very, uh, very exciting. What has, second question from Top Seeker, what has a longer torch life, plasma or fossil fuel burner? Uh, there's not much, I, I, there's not, not, a, not, not much difference. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're, and fine. they're pretty much there for, for a long time. Yeah, I got to imagine those things, those things, they all go for a long time. If you're looking at economics and, uh, and, and, and payback, it's, it's, I, I don't believe there's any difference, in, not, not any uh, uh, significant difference in, in, in that part of the equation. And I think the third question uh, almost sounds a little like the first one, but reduced torch change out times, plasma torch for plasma torch, Oh, versus fossil fuel burner for fossil fuel burner. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll have to maybe Good look. Good question, though. Smart I'll question. What, I'll go on a, I will go on Agoracom if I'm wrong, but and, 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 and but I, once they're there, once the plasma torch is there, it's there. Once the burner's there, it's there. It, you, you, don't, you don't change them out. Um, uh, if there's any change out from main, you just replace it with another plasma torch. There's no real, it's very, very fast. All right. Yeah. It almost sounds like it almost sounds like NASCAR. You know, these plasma torches sound like uh, NASCAR comes into the pits. There's the pyrogenesis team. Fit, fit, change out the tires. Put the Nas put NASCAR the is the, the, is the, the burner. NASCAR is the burners. We, we we play in the Formula One race. All right. All right. So <laughs> not for, much, much. Yeah. Much higher level. It's the red. It's the red. It's the red, George. It's the red. Hey, can I ask you a question? So I'm going to deviate because now that uh, you've given a couple of answers, I'm going to interject with one, which is. Has, is this, because from what you're telling us, time to build, time to change, downtime seems so seamless that that just makes it an easier sell, an easier yeah. decision for, uh, for these clients at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for this type of thing, they've had these burners there forever and, and we presented a plasma alternative and they seem to be embracing it. I mean, I mean maybe someone will come up in their basement somewhere with a, a new fangled idea that's totally different from everything, but so far... This is what seems to be very exciting them right now. Well, now we know why people are excited about the possibility of doing some 
really great things with these uh, iron ore pelletization clients. Yeah, and that's that's one of the many industries that are interested in it, George. Yeah. Next is cold and rich. Oh, cold I'm and not rich. sure why cold and rich is rich and cold because if you're rich, you can either heat your home really well or you can live in the Bahamas. But for now, cold and rich is cold and rich. <laughs> His question is, hello, Peter. In the recently posted annual results, it was mentioned that Pyro bought back approximately 1.2 million shares in 2020. I did a quick search on SETI to find this transaction, but was not able to find it. Why is this transaction not posted there? Okay, uh, George, I mean, I get things all confused in terms of the name, but I think SETI is where insiders post transactions, I think. Yeah, um, I mean, that's, that was going to be my there's answer, another, but I want to another, leave it to you. Another, uh, so, so what we've done is, what we do, so do you understand how this works? We buy back the shares. Then what we do is we tell our trust company that we've done it. They go to the brokerage firm, get the shares and cancel them. So they're out of the system. They're out of the bookkeeping. Right. We also, at the end of, uh, I think we have until the 10th of the following month, maximum, to report the previous month's transactions to the TSX. We can do it anytime during the month, but that's the latest. And then the TSX takes that, I assume, and manages their numbers with it on, on their platform. Right, because everyone's got to adjust their numbers, right? Now, this was cold and rich. And, and so cold and rich, I think what when you go and you look at the numbers, first of all, there's a delay, I suspect, for them to get around to doing it, although I, I suspect it could be instantaneous uh, as soon as they get it. But if you also recall, what we've announced is that the convertible venture has converted. So those shares have been issued. And there are some warrants that we mentioned, some actually some warrants that expire next year that have a, a exercised their rights to the shares. And so those have been issued. So when you look at the total number, it probably is not the last one you saw several months ago, plus the, I think the 1.2 million we, we took out. It also is adjusting for all the new shares. Right, right. So it's not so, X minus 1.2 million. It's not adding up. It's X minus 1.2 million plus whatever has been issued for warrants and convertibles and things like that. Yeah, this is a question that has been asked uh, a couple of times through emails and things like that. So I think what, what I should do is maybe educate myself on if there's a place where there's a line by line breakdown of these type of transactions. Somewhere. Yeah, public ledger. I've, I've never heard of it, but that would be a great idea if there was a public ledger out there. So uh, investors of all companies could actually see in real time, you know, what the, what the latest share counts are. Because you're right, no one's going to keep track well, what, of it. What, what happens is a lot of transactions going in and out, I guess, for some yeah. companies. And it's the balance at the end of the day right. that, <clears throat> that matters, basically. Yeah. So, and you are right. SETI is where you go to see if Peter's bought shares or sold shares or other insiders, board members. So you wouldn't find an issuer buyback on SETI. Um, but we'll find out where that is possible. But in the meantime, I'm going to look uh, at that because we're the ultimate insider. I mean, we yeah, that we would, but I don't know. I, we, it wasn't part of the, um, as far as we knew, it wasn't part of the, 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 the box we had to take and file. No, I don't think it is either. That's why you report in advance where you get permission from the exchange. So I remember that was last year. You tell the exchange you're planning to buy up to this many shares. They give you the right. Uh, I mean, they give you the permission, sorry, and, and away you go. Yeah. Uh, next question is from Hoagie. Hey, Hello Hoagie. again, Peter. Hey, so you guys know each other because there's an again in there. Thanks <laughs> for the opportunity to ask more questions. My, my first question has to do with the powders division. Actually, I like that. Uh, so one, it seems like you've been focused on titanium powders. Can you discuss other powders you may be working on other than silicon with HPQ? I think we press released, uh, in Inconel, I think, I think we press release. Say that again. Well, you press release what? I think we press released Inconel that we can do. Okay. Inconel. Um, and, um, other than that, okay, I, I can't talk about other things that are not press release because uh, any given metal gives a, a view as to what the market might be that we're pursuing. Um, I don't think, and I, I prefer not to do that. And I prefer not sure. to divulge other things there. In fact, the other manufacturing sector right now is, is, is not right now anytime is a little bit sensitive because whatever we, we, we say uh, that's material that, that someone like Hogan might like to hear, 
we should probably press release. So let's let's hear if he has another question in that in that area or not, or or he or she. All right. Question two. In a similar vein with Dross Right, could you touch on how many other metals the system would be beneficial for? And do you see a market for Dross Dross Right involving other metals? So, um, so I guess because you did with the alumna, I think what he's getting at or she is the, uh, the, the big deal this year was for a high tech aluminum smelter. So I guess he's wondering if there are other kind of oh, yes. metals yeah. and smelt. You know. So I think what we press released, I'm pretty sure we press released somewhere that there, the, what might be interesting is zinc and copper. And we have been doing, looking at zinc. Um, right now what we're concentrating on is, um, now that we've nailed down this particular contract in aluminum, uh, what we want to do is leverage off of our successes, which would be to take that, which is a, a huge feather in our cap. Um, our technology won, I believe, the, the largest uh, uh, request for bid ever put out in the marketplace. So our technology won that. Uh, I believe that, as you might kind of imagine, anybody who was anybody in that industry was there bidding and sharpening their pencil. Uh, and we walked, uh, our technology walked away with the trophy. So obviously we can build on that, on that success. There's, a, there's a, you know, it's immediate, immediate credibility amongst people who are thinking about it. Safe to assume that other smelters around the world may have reached out some, not all of them, but is it safe to assume that some may have reached out and said, hey, we saw that. We want to know more it, about it, your dross, right? It would be a reasonable assumption, wouldn't you? I, I, I hope so. But I, I got to ask. George, you're a reasonable guy. So that might be a reasonable assumption. The, um, I, I think I'm not disclosing anything out of, out of school by saying that, that, that that's an obviously a fallout of, of such a success. Sure. Um, obviously, we also want to pursue tolling ourselves. You know, going on, what that means is instead of uh, selling systems, um, what we like to do is actually run the systems on the site and benefit uh, a bit more from the economics of doing so. And, and so, so that's totally means that, you'd be getting an ongoing recurring revenue stream that's smaller so instead of one big sale you're getting a toll which is just a smaller repeating monthly annual income for the rest of as long as you're there and, and you're, you're thinking that's a better that's definitely a better that, that's, a, that's the best way and if you look at what happened recently when our technology won uh this particular contract it, it's almost structured like a tolling kind of arrangement the, the, sort of the benefits seem to be better derived like a tolling kind of arrangement, which is very interesting. We want to replicate that as a toller uh, in situations where that's, that's, that's an opportunity to do, where that's an opportunity to do that. So we're pursuing those type of opportunities. And um, I think the, the, it was Ho Hoagie, Hoagie that asked this question. Uh, no, this one. Yeah, it is Hoagie. Yep, Hoagie. It is Hoagie still. And, and I think Hoagie was basically asking about, you know, would we be doing other, other metals? I guess what I'm trying to uh, suggest to Hoagie is, uh, Yes, but what we're do we only have so many assets and, 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 and assets in terms of time and people. We're going to dedicate to nailing this down, building up upon this immediate success in the in the in the industry that we sure. demonstrate success. And if these other ones come on that we're also looking at, fine, no problem. There's p potential there, but we we have the other thing. George is what's amazing is we say now we've got the golden ticket. Or the golden ticket is in pyrogenesis is now we're inside the fence. Our technology is now in, inside the fence uh, from uh, uh, of a client, a potential, I mean, of a, an, an end user. So what can you do there? There's lots of other things you can do inside the fence, even cross sell a waste treatment system. Now, that's not, I'm not suggesting that's, that's on the, on, on, on the burner at all, but there's other opportunities. Um, Looking at your system and seeing how you might ver uh, 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 horizontally integrate uh, uh, offerings. So once you're inside that fence, you've got what we call the golden ticket, and uh, we're very excited about now playing inside the fence and in a number of uh, in a number of arenas. So yeah, that's that. so Hoagie, we're looking at that, but we're concentrating some on some of our winnings right now. And, and so the focus it. now is more on aluminum and then expand those relationships because those are the low hanging fruit. They're all yeah. there right now. Yeah. And then move on to other metals once you've kind of maximized those. Uh, yeah. I'm going to ask you a side question. It's not one of hoagies, but it just makes me think because uh, you talk about tolling and that brings up 
the announcement last year about the Japanese uh, trading house. Uh, are you able to talk about where that relationship is? Um, I, I, what I can speak to is anybody that thinks that it's, it's um, somehow not there or being put to the side, absolutely not. In fact, uh, uh, recent, recent, recent events have uh, uh, put it front, front and center and uh, uh, we're, we're very excited with that. We're very happy with where it's going. Um, and there probably hope there may be more news on that down the road, but uh, well, but that's good to know that it's yeah. that it's actually come front and center. Yeah, because we haven't talked about that in a while. That's yeah. great. Actually, that's that's a that's that's a great update there. And the last question from Hoagie was: Are you affiliated with Pyrogenesis SA in Greece? No, um, Pyrogenesis SA was something that was done uh, many many moons ago, um, where we actually introduced the concept of uh, waste destruction. Uh, in, in waste destruction using plasma in Greece. Uh, and we, uh, Pyrogenesis Day was created at the time and we let it go. We, we didn't, we, not that's many, 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 many years ago. So yeah, sure. they have access to the name, but absolutely not associated with us at all. Haven't spoken to people who are using that. I don't even know what they're using it for anymore. Um, okay. I don't know what yeah, using. Fair enough. And then he just one comment from Hogu was glad to see in the outlook that you're going to focus more on powders. Thank you very much. They're, they are glad to see it, actually, because, again, can't assume. Yeah. Next one up is Snowdrift. Hey, Snowdrift. Mr. Pascali, in your year-end filing, you said that you'd received significant payments from the draw strike contract. One, can you tell us how many payments you've received since the first two that you already news released? So we, we looked at that um, at the time as uh, when we announced things as being significant at the time. You, you obviously don't want to keep on announcing things that are not significant because you can be accused of just coming out with useless information. And so we haven't, we haven't press released any additional um, payments. Makes sense. And I don't think this would be the appropriate place to give additional information. However, I do know that people are very interested and um, and this question has been asked in emails and, uh, I'm not sure on Agoracom, uh, but I get a general sense the market might want to hear this. So we'll revisit this uh, this policy, if you will, and see maybe it might be it might be in the interest of the marketplace to give an update on that. Yeah, yeah. Even if you maybe potentially include it as part of another press release. Uh, I'm very cautious, uh, George, and I'll tell you what I'm very cautious about investing. I'm very sensitive to getting information out to investors, particularly existing investors, about things that are pending. Because as an investor, I'd like to know what's out there, even if it's low probability, high probability, you know, what's out there. Because I want to sell, I want to know. I wouldn't want to sell on the eve of a signing of a $20 million contract. You know, I like to have something. In, so, um, so similarly, I don't want to seem that I'm pushing the market with just any piece of news particularly given the increase in stock price recently, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to be accused of, you know, saying useless things to just continue. You know, so, well, I think, I think, yeah, cause I, I, so I know where you're going. It's presumed now that after the, after you reported the first couple of payments that the relationship is off and running, things are happening. So there's no need to, to, to I, and I would agree with that. There's so, no need to keep reporting incremental yeah. movements in that relationship. It's we, obviously on its way. So, you know, it's on its way. We're obliged to press release something that would be materially different. You know, about materially different things coming in or coming in faster is not materially different, in my opinion. Um, uh, things slowing down again. You know, people don't read this wrong, but uh, it wouldn't be material. So, uh, but the market dictates what they want to hear and, and how often they want to hear it, so to some degree. If there's a, if there's a, a, a a large outcry for information, then arguably then we should probably give some sort of an out update. And well, the most important thing, the relationship is it's fine. So it's all just, yeah. it's moved. that's why you're not reporting anymore because there's nothing material to report. It's on its way. Even with the COVID, it's humming. Has Auburn Duval brought any powder customers to Pyrogenesis? If so, has this resulted in any contracts? Um, I... I've mentioned before that there are, are partners, my interpretation, my interpretation. 
uh, prefers to keep to play their cards closer to the chest. Right. They're much bigger than us. They don't have a need or, or an interest maybe in giving out information that's not really, really, really material. Um, right. It would, it, would be, it wouldn't make sense for Auburn Duval to, or, and Pyrogenesis to disclose that you've sold powders to an aerospace company or a defense company because then that just tells the world, hey, there's a customer there. Let's see if we can go after them and, and get them next time. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Exactly. So I want to respect our partner's way of operating um, until such time as something that is truly material takes place. Um, however, let's see if I can put this in perspective. <laughs> we started a relationship with an, uh, a North American OEM, um, and I press released that recently, subsequent to our relationship with Auburn Naval. And Ober de Val has been moving arguably with a lot more determination and focus given the relationship we have with them. And this North American OEM, I can tell you, has been here. So you might make other assumptions given the industry and how it operates with respect to other things. So all I can say to you is that what we press released with respect to the North American OEM is that the North American OEM has been to our, our, our plan. And I'll read that headline for everyone in case people didn't miss it or don't remember. June 4th, Pyrogenesis Additive Manufacturing Quality Management System is approved by major aerospace company, complements next-gen technology. So that's, that's what you're referring to. Yeah, they, they didn't do it by Zoom. <laughs> so, so that's just something maybe you want to think about a bit. Last question from Snowdrift. When you file a report on CDAR and then it appears on various financial sites, such as Yahoo, are you the one who sends a news release to those organizations or do they just choose to publish certain filings found on CDAR? I've always presumed that you were the ones who initiated the publication, but I was recently told that it was the opposite. So how it works is we don't really uh, send anything to new to, 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 to yahoo.coms and things like that. What happens is we legally are, are obliged to disseminate the information in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a global global fashion. So we've chosen a, a newswire, I think it's called Global Newswire. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and forgive me whoever it is, if it's not Global Newswire, but it's someone like Global no, Newswire. No, it's, it's Globe Newswire, yeah. It's Global Newswire. So, and what they do is um, they're, they, they disseminate it across, across the, uh, the spectrum. Um, and what these newswires like Yahoo.com, they'll pick it out of that, of that ether, if you will. <laughs> yeah, it's all feed, right? It's all, it's all, it's all feed. feed. And they'll choose what to publish and what not to publish. And so like, that's how it works. We, we basically write our press release. We, we send it to a global newswire and the rest takes the place. The rest happens phone. automatically in the ether. So I, I don't know if that answers Snowdrift's question, but. Yeah, no, I think it does. I think it's exactly it. The process is uh, CDR filings and press releases go through the appropriate people who post them. And then it's up to each. Look, some financial sites won't pick them up uh, just the way they work. Or maybe they pick them up much later because, you know, there's a lot of data of if they're pinging back and forth on every company into every platform. So uh, that well, I think Global, Global Newswire, when we give it to them, they, they do a simultaneous filing and, 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 and publication. Yeah, right, right. And then it's up to Yahoo.com when they pick it up and so on and yeah. so forth. Uh, and he or they uh, say, thanks in advance for your reply. I look forward to the Q&A uh, session. Thanks so much for everything you're doing. Yesterday's video was awesome. <laughs> wow <laughs> hey i'm not sure if snow just trying to tell me to pick up my game in our interviews maybe i don't know man <laughs> you know, is that a, is that a backhanded compliment there, <laughs> yeah. there you go. next up positive thinker peter okay. can you see a scenario where the need was so great for companies to upgrade to pyros plasma torches that you consider licensing out the technology assuming that pyro couldn't handle the demand. In other words, sounds like, do you have a capacity point where if this gets so popular, if plasma torch demand comes in from other iron ore pelletization companies and other applications that you would need to 
look to alternative uh, manufacturing sources, I guess. So just by the way the question is formed, it's saying that it's impossible for me to meet the demand. Um, and if it's impossible for me to meet the demand, it makes it only reasonable, financially reasonable for me to look to, uh, to alternate solutions. Um, when you do that, when you, give, uh, when, you, when you give people the rights to do certain things, you give away certain control and, and certain profits. So that obviously has to be balanced uh, against delaying it and you getting those profits or speeding it up and letting somebody else run with it with the probability they may or may not do as well as you. Um, balancing that might be the fact that if you don't, you may lose it because the person for some reason is gonna, is about the budget now and won't have it next year. And if you don't deliver, you lose it. You know, that's a different, so there's all sorts of things that go into the mix and, and I'm not married to doing it myself. There's no, um, you have to look at uh, IP and things like that to see, <coughs> to see if, um, if it's at risk, if you start licensing. So there's, there's, a, a lot of, there's a lot of different elements that go into it. So Well, actually, let me ask you a follow-up question to that kind of, that, that might help everyone at home and help you, which is how fast can you scale up? So in your, cur in your current capacity, you know that you can create X, you can build X amount of plasma torches. Obviously everyone has a, Everyone has a capacity, even the local hamburger place has a capacity and they only expand, expand that capacity if there's more business. So could you easily continue to expand capacity where you can keep it all in house? It's just a case of adding on you well, know, more lines or more space, more, more factory space. Is it just as simple as that? You just, you just keep well, bolting on. So if you're looking at the example of a hamburger place, it's a little bit different from us because we, we sub a lot of this, we can sub a lot of this stuff out and, and, and deliver it. We can actually install it remotely or instruct people how to install it. So um, it's not exactly like a hamburger place, but if you want to use the hamburger pay, place exam, example, how he might, uh, might expand is he might open a, a small window on the side and deliver it to the street. Uh, you know, instead of having people sit down, he may just, you know, he doesn't open up a whole hamburger store, just expand the kitchen a bit. And this, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating going into splitting hairs, but, but the bottom, the, the, your question is fundamentally: um, Do you can you see yourself reaching a a um, a capacity limit? Not just yet. I mean, because we have such a, a, a broad based su supplier group that we've already uh, approached, and we're expanding it, and we can put quite a few systems through there instantaneous you know, very quickly so you can handle existing customers plus whatever you have in your pipeline you're, yeah, you're comfortable right now you, yeah. you you're, you're you're good I'm, I'm very happy i don't see even the numbers we're talking about i think we can deal with i mean we have okay. well, we have visibility on it we can deal and, with. and positive thinker says i asked this question uh because of your partnering with the japanese trading company with the dross right business which is obviously different from the. Uh... Oh, I think I see what he's saying. I think, or, or who is she saying? Um, I, I believe they're referring to the fact that what we did was we partnered up with a Japanese trading company to try and accelerate um, the, the, the introduction of Dross right worldwide. He's right. Okay, we, we partnered up with someone to accelerate something. So, you can take comfort that when the decision has to be made to do that, we take the appropriate step. In that particular situation, what we identified was um, our lack of global connections to help us with the, uh, implementing tolling locally. So we figured if we went all around the world, we'd have to develop new relationships, to be able, which we didn't have. So this Japanese trading company was basically a one-stop shop for that. At this particular point, George, we don't see us l lacking the ability to meet the demand just yet that we, don't, that we need to bring in somebody else um, to help us with that. On the torch side, I'm talking about the drugs on the torch side. Yep. Okay, yeah, fair enough, thank you. Uh, slick smooth. Hey, <laughs> slick smooth. <laughs> Peter, thanks for the opportunity to ask questions. How many plasma torches are available for modeling or soon will be? Okay. Um, 
so what you do is when you have a modeling, it's basically um, a program where you put in all the different parameters and it's actually your modeling in the, in the program, all the different parameters within the process and the furnace to see how it will, the, by introducing a plasma torch will affect in the model the process. And it's, and it's widely accepted as a, uh, um, um, a basis for determining outcomes. We don't really have a plasma torch that's modeling. You know, it's not doing the, uh, the right. catwalk or anything. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but um, man, they're sexy at the price that they sell for. They're sexy <laughs> if they were modeling. So, um, so, so from that aspect, um, there's, no, there's no real modeling torches necessary, just to be clear. Could you provide an idea of how many companies and their industry have contacted Pyro uh, regarding plasma torch interest? I guess what they're what oh Slick is trying to get at here is how's the pipeline looking, even though you probably can't talk specifics without uh, a press release. Yeah, the problem the problem is if I start talking numbers like, you know, it's, it's gotta be in a press release. It's otherwise otherwise I don't have be, ten fingers. <laughs> just, I can't can't be on that. Uh, what have I said? I said that we've talked to two. No, actually, we contracted modeling for two. I, I mentioned that there's other industries, people connecting us in other industries. I think I mentioned three other industries. So there you have five. That's one hand. Um, <laughs> look, there's a lot. I, I, honestly, if I actually sat down here and started trying to count them, I wouldn't know. I, I, there's a lot. It's, it's just a lot. Is the world, um, <laughs> Peter, lot. is the world really waking up to – Pyro's plasma torch capabilities. I mean, you've always had it, but no matter what, sometimes you can build the best mousetrap. It's, it still takes time for the world to know it. Uh, do you feel really good about the world's awareness, of, or, or at least the industries that you're interested in, their awareness as to your plasma torch capabilities? Is it, uh, is it well, really going viral? Um, I, 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 I Am I happy with it? I'm, 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 I'm happy that it's been embraced by the number of people it has been. I, and I see it increasing every day. I, I don't think we've, I don't think we've touched. I don't think we've touched the, ice, the tip of the iceberg. I mean, it keeps on every day. People are calling us about this, that, and the other. Um, uh, that's why I'm very excited about it. It's, it's uh, just trying to keep up with the requests. Is, is, um, it's exciting. It's, 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 it's exciting time. Am I excited about? Yeah, I am. Um, what, 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 what turned that particular element on? Well, it was the success in Sweden. Um, Sweden is well regarded, a very respected uh, a, a group of, uh, uh, of uh, innovative people who have uh, uh, the same goal as many of these uh, facilities. And when they came up with this, immediate, immediate attention, immediate credibility. I mean, well, that's imagine. that's home of Greta, right? At the end of the day, that's <laughs> home of Greta Thornburg, and she's the biggest it, 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 environmental it, it, activist in the world. And when a Swedish company says this is really environmentally friendly compared to what our alternatives are, bam! In Georgia, we were competing against a Swedish company for that bid. Um, so what happens? I also think, George, is you have got these big companies that have a problem with greenhouse gases, and everybody and his uncle is knocking on the door with their trumped up idea of what's going to solve the solution. How do you differentiate with all, you know, these, 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 uh, these, uh, these uh, facilities, how do you dif differentiate between the legit and the dreamers? How do you differentiate with these hundreds of people and connections? Well, guess what? Sweden said, this is the way to go. And, um, and then it's, it's better than someone in our own backyard. And then they start peeling good. back the onion and say, oh, my goodness, this company does business with the U.S. Navy. They must be credible. They're doing added manufacturing over in Duval. This, this, they're, they're plasma experts, you know, and wow, let's, and all of a sudden, you know, particularly when they want to be convinced, what I mean is they've got a problem. They've got a problem either because of regulations or because of a board or because their financiers are limiting their, 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 limit to, uh, they're limiting their, their availability of credit. Uh, whatever is motivating them, they're motivated and they're looking for a simple solution that doesn't impede their, uh, their, their, their operations. And voila, here you go, the trifecta. 
Uh, the last question also has to do with how many companies are negotiating and so on, a uh, number of torches. I think you kind of answered that, that we can't really. Well, you can, yeah. You can't so, really. You no, can't how, really many, how many companies know? How many talks know? Suffice to say the pipeline looks good, right? That's, that's, that's what Slick Smooth is probably trying to get out there. So Slick Smooth says, thanks in advance and regards from Tupelo. From who? Tupelo. T-U-P-E-L-O. Maybe that's where they're located. Oh, maybe. Maybe it's a person or a location. So long as it's not a threat, I'm okay. <laughs> Next up is uh, uh, F the what 101, which is FTW 101. Just they, you know, they reversed the WTF, right? So very innovative name. We might have to run you through our, uh, through our community standards there, FTW, and see if you can keep that name. I'm just kidding. Whatever happened I, to Bob or Jim or Sally? <laughs> or, <laughs> well, they are gone, one. buddy. Just wait until you start seeing these great avatars on the Gorecom where everyone's going to be able to create these amazing liquid avatars. You know, then it's going to get even more fun. Hi, Peter. Upon completion of modeling contracts, would you expect the clients to immediately purchase torches to replace the burners in their existing facilities? Um, would I expect people to immediately order after? Okay, so I would expect that as things are progressing, so, so basically my perception of the modeling is to prove, to tick a box, cover your ass, so to speak, in terms of we've done this. Yep, yep. Everybody, expects, everybody expects it to work. So with that in mind, people are already thinking about it. You know, thinking about right. what, you know, what type of thing, what tour, what, how are we going to go about it? What kind of um, rollout? And some ideas are going thrown back and forth. Now, I like to put things in perspective. You know, we, we close in North America thousands and thousands of houses a day. We do it very well. We know how to do it. It takes three months to do it. Okay? Nobody's going to start closing big, huge deals in you know, immediately. And when I think of immediately, I think of it in the context of business, not in the or context maybe, maybe of the question getting, more, Maybe the or, question more purchase orders rather than, yeah, you, you can't just buy them off the shelf. Uh, maybe it's more, do you expect clients to immediately start playing purchase orders, even if it takes three, six but, but But think about it. Think about it. How you have to figure out which plant, which torches, how you're going to bring it in, how you're going to ship it in, how, what are the duties? You know, COVID. How are we going to actually go down there and, and, and ch change it out? You know, you know right. there's, there's a, 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 a number of things that make sense in thinking out the process, even without, even without, um, even without COVID. Let's say we can travel freely. You know, what class are you going to travel? How many people are required? What's the cost going to be? What hotel are you going to be in? You know, what type of things do you have to bring into the country? What types of things are you going to take out of the country? What are the taxes? There's, you know, what type of benefits does the, does the company have that they can apply for from governments and grants and all sorts of funds to, to alleviate the cost of doing this? So it's not just a, you're not buying a hamburger. You're not, oh, I want a beer. Oh, I got to, let's go down to the beer. It takes me 15 minutes. It's, it, it's fast. What, what I'm trying to explain to people is, from, from a corporate commercial perspective, this thing is moving fast. From going down to the bar and getting a beer, it's getting it's slow. Uh, and, I, and sometimes people tell me, you know, in terms of, a, of, a, of a, the life of a firefly or a fruit fly, which is three, I don't know, several hours, or a tortoise, which is 100 years, I mean, you've got to put it in perspective. And you've got to cut a guy a break like me because we're going as fast and doing the best as we can. Um, no, I don't. Yeah, and I don't. I don't think anyone's uh, so, so unhappy with the about, speed. I think so, people are more excited about, hey, right. how's this looking? You know, well, to break this question maybe down to its simpler form, also is, I guess what FTW is trying to get at is, this isn't just someone running these models just to kick the tires. I apologize. I'm so in it. I I I apologize, uh, Mr. F. <laughs> uh, the uh, I, I didn't understand that to be the case. So. No, it's not just some people, it's not just some R&D, scientific, university, in the basement type of professors trying to figure out things. These are big companies who you can barely get their attention, who are moving fast, spending money fast, taking off the boxes fast, with the sole goal to buy 
a torch to get some torches to alleviate not a concern maybe to address a goal let's put it that way not a concern in you know, a goal which is to decrease greenhouse gases either to mitigate costs future costs or to meet to be socially responsible because their board their shareholders want it and then they go on to ask peter if so because like you said there's a reason why they're going through this modeling, right? They're, they're, it's not an academic exercise. They, they, this is a serious exercise for purchase decisions. Do you think they would opt to convert the entire plant to plasma torches or would they have a test phase where a few torches would be tested under operating conditions for a certain period? In essence, what do you expect the rollout to look like for customers? Okay. So again, this is just coming from my perspective. We have no reason really to think of this way, but I believe what's going to happen is going to be a continuous flow. Like, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to shut down plants. So as many torches as they want, it's just going to be, we're going to make them. It's going to be a rollout. Okay. So we're going to get some visibility on that. I guess once we're done with um, maybe the modeling uh, and, 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 and some discussions and negotiations or they may want to take out uh, one torch or four torches or five torches and see how they work. So what's interesting is to me, I, I don't see the difference between that. The time is so short uh, between either having some test torches and then a rollout or a immediate rollout. It's so that the, the time difference is so insignificant when you look at the impact it has on the industry and, um, and the, uh, and, and the company and the valuations and, 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 and credibility. Um, from their perspective, they've got a goal. Either they want to, again, not be penalized or they want to meet some sort of corporate objective for shareholders or satisfy their lenders. So they have a legitimate goal they want to get to. And like you and me, when we have a goal, we don't want to just, we want to get there as fast as we can because there's a benefit of some sort. That's, that's what I would assume would be some of our clients. Um, potential yeah, clients. Especially because like you said, it's so seamless. Yeah. It's as if they have to start planning plant shutdowns, plant maintenance upgrades and all that. So really maybe the only question comes down to. Well, but George, if I may, if I may just talk about our perspective, as a client, because for our perspective, you'll find the power of Genesis. What we do is we try to move forward uh, with, with determination, yet with purpose. We plant our feet firmly, we plant our feet solidly, and um, we take the next move. It's the same thing when it comes to deploying torches. It would be nice to have a couple in place so we can see how they operate. You know, we're, our, we're a company, we're very concerned. We may be putting too many uh, uh, screws on. We maybe you know maybe we could do with one or two or three less screws. Maybe we have a wheel that's maybe we don't need that wheel. So instead of rolling out all these torches with all this additional weight, it'd be nice to actually have a week, couple of weeks working on a month's working on and see how it operates. Um, maybe we it, it, so so that's that makes and that sense. goes to show you by the way that you actually really care for your customers because. If you just cared about your bottom line, you want to roll these babies out as fast as possible to George Co. because the yes. modeling work and you want to just ram them down his throat and fill up your income, st your income statement. But you're actually talking about, you're so confident in the, in the relationship and the, and the technology of your positive torch that you're willing to roll it out. George, uh, George I, I, love, I love our customers. We're there for our customers. But quite frankly, the reason I'm doing it, it makes a lot more sense. And there's, 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 a, there's an expression when, when you shoot, when, you, when you're shooting a pistol, slow is fast. Yeah. But what it is, you, when you shoot a pistol, uh, you plant your feet and you aim, and slow is smooth, smooth is fast. That's what they say when you're shooting a pistol. And it's the same principle. If you've got a principle shooting a gun where there may be a, 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 a life and death situation, they're telling you to go slow because then you go smooth, which means you'll go fast, you might as well take that into real life where it might not be life-threatening, but the, the principles hold. If you're going to do something fast, I like it. and you're going to do it right, and we're taught this time and time, and that, time and again in kids, you know, a stitch in time saves nine, things like that. You know, people repeat it, but they don't get it. And our experience has been, 
even with US military and the US Navy, the reason why we're there for so long is we do things slow, methodical, fast. Okay. I like it. And by the way, first time I ever heard that reference was in the movie Shooter with Mark, with Mark Wahlberg. So, oh, really? So smooth, smooth as fast. Yeah, that was. Smooth as fast. I mean, and, and, and you can't argue that. I and mean, it's not yeah. about guns or violence or death. It's not about just make, makes bloody sense. I mean, that, that's the way it is. And that's the way we at Pyrogenesis govern how we do business. And that's yeah. why we're playing with the big boys because they, in all their experience, look at the small players and say, you know, these guys. These guys are it. These guys know how to do it properly. Yeah, because most, most companies, let's face it, fall victim to trying to close as much business as fast as possible, right? And that means you are literally running over, you're literally running over yourself. At the end of the day, all you end up doing is going backwards to pick up the mess, which ends up taking longer. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. I yeah. wonder who's going to be the first one to post that to the uh, pyrogenesis forum, <laughs> by the way, right? <laughs> Maybe we should give out some kind of award. First person to post, first person to post that gets a plasma torch. To that. That's going to be my, that's going to be my handle. When I, when I blog something, I got it smooth and fast. Um, and, th and, uh, and uh, FTW says, thanks in advance. We've got uh, just a couple more, just a couple more investors. Mazer RR. Hi, Peter. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to ask questions. It's always much appreciated. Thanks for saying that. Hey, Mazer. Pyrogenesis, question number one, Pyrogenesis stated that their next-gen plasma atomization system, due to its high production rate of 20 kgs per hour, can more cost-efficiently create titanium powder, which would make it accessible to many new markets that had previously, which had previously found this high-value material too costly. Yeah. Could you talk a bit about these new markets and what kind of uses would you, uh, would could we expect for titanium powder in the future? Well, I, I won't speak to them other than to say generally, it's, it makes sense that if, you're, if you've got something that is too expensive for certain markets, and then all of a sudden you're able to make it a lot cheaper, um, those additional markets will open up. I mean, it's pretty, it's, I, I can't go into more detail than that. Um, yeah, you said earlier that everyone wants to play their cards close to their chest. Yeah. And he does go on to ask, or they go on to ask, I got to stop saying that. Is Pyro looking to develop partnerships with powder distribution, distributors for regions other than the EU, or would you prefer to sell directly to end-use clients outside the EU? Um, Stumper. I think, I, I, I think we're, sorry? I was just telling Mazer, great question. You've stumped Peter Pascali. <laughs> Major ask good questions. Uh, uh, the um, let's just say I'm very satisfied with our relationship in uh, in in Europe with Oberdeval, and I think it's it's um, it's uh, I think my brothers would be at least in North America to 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 go out on our own. One of the reasons is uh, George is you give away some profit by 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 default to to someone in the middle. Yeah, it makes sense. And, and, and in Europe, it's a good idea. In North America, I'm not so sure it's a good idea. I kind of, I kind of like being independent in North America. That's not just that Chris. convinced, but, but that's where I like to play it. Yeah, I see that. I see that, especially because Europe is a much more fragmented, no matter what. It's a more fragmented market because you got different countries, different right? even though they're on the EU, different countries, different regulations, different languages. Having a partner there helps, whereas a big market like the United States is pretty uniform and you can go after it on your own a lot easier. Yeah, right? I never looked at that way, but you're right. I can see that. Gad Chris, um, I'm going to ask this question because Gad Chris took the time to write it all out, but I'm pretty sure we've, we've crossed this territory, but we want to always acknowledge these amazing investors and members that are taking the time. So they ask, now that the company has a lot of attention, can you tell us how many companies are inquiring about our products and of that number, how many do you think are serious enough that it could turn into a contract? And do you have some discussions with Canadian and Quebec companies? Okay. So again, it's kind of like a pipeline question that we've addressed. I can, I can, um, I can, I can, I can answer that without uh, without saying anything too confidential. We're 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 um, um, talking to Quebec Canadian companies. Uh, we, we've got such a, a, a broad mix of of uh, products that I don't think that would be surprising. I think something that might be interesting is that 
one of the challenges of a company like ours is how do you differentiate between uh, somebody who's just a fax jockey asking you questions or, or is really, really, um, really interested in the product? Um, over time, you, you, as you get into the industries, you know who the players are and, 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 and that happens. But you always get, our inboxes are always inundated with people asking questions seemingly because they're interested in buying product. Um, and that can really take you down. So what we do is we have a questionnaire basically uh, tailored to these particular things. Thank right. you very much. Boom. Thank you very much. Boom. Thank you very much. Boom. And depending on how they answer, and surprisingly enough, a lot of them don't even bother answering, um, will determine whether what type of attention we give them. Having said that, maybe investors don't want to hear this, but we do sometimes spend time with people who don't want our product, but we'll, we'll guide them to some other, some other, you know, they have, they have no use for our products, but we'll guide them to somewhere else that we think they, yeah. may, they may benefit. Because, you know, they took the time, they, they get to know us, maybe down the road when they have another need or a reference, uh, you know, they hear somebody else needs something, they'll send them our way. Uh, so we do that sometimes, not as much as we used to, but we do that sometimes. Hey, if they're not a fit, you're right. You, as a good corporate citizen, you want to help out George Co. get his solution because you're right. They may need your solution down the road and come back and say, hey, Peter was so good. That's, I got to tell you, that's happened to a Gorecom where I've said, we're not quite the fit for you. You should use this. And customers always appreciate it. And there's yeah. nothing better than goodwill for your company's reputation. So, God, Chris, thanks for that question. Thanks final, you. final Fine. investor, final set of questions. Poetech 2, who says, Poetech 2, okay. Who says, hi, Peter, I missed the deadline for the Q&A, but hopefully uh, you can still reply to my question eventually here. Poetech, we brought you in under the wire, despite the fact that you uh, came in over the 12 o'clock deadline. So we'll subtract a couple hundred points off your reputation score as a penalty. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, we got you in here. So they ask, can you describe what phases are involved in, a su in, uh, in a such a modeling contract and how long each phase is estimated to take? That's a little different question. You know, how long does these, do these models take time? You know, how long does it take to play them out? Um, I think roughly eight weeks are the ones we're looking at right now. Uh, I, think that, I think we press release roughly. Those two are, I think, roughly eight weeks, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Oftentimes, the, the heavy, the, the, the really interesting stuff is done in the beginning because, you know, uh, and the rest is, is, you know, additional benefits, let's say. Right. Uh, additional benefits like, uh, I can go into them if you want. I mean, there's, there's like uh, no sulfur. So, so, so if there's sulfur, we can take out the sulfur, which means there's no acid rain, no heavy metals, no uh, or, um, uh, organic carbons, no uh, soot, which are problems to human health. Um, the other things that we uh, we we tap into uh, when we're when we're taking uh, interesting enough, George, when we when we're replacing oil burners, there's no need for an oil tanker outside to store the oil, right? Um, so there's no environmental or or liabilities associated with that. I think it was in northern Canada, Yukon, somewhere recently, a tanker a tank that was ho holding the oil uh, uh, broke and fell into the river with an environmental issue. Um, so these are the type of things and the maintenance that we decided we really described before. So um, all sorts of other benefits. Uh, I forget the question. <laughs> it's getting late. Sorry, George. No, what no, you're it? almost here. No, no, but uh, no, what you were talking about each phase in the modeling. Oh, yeah, so, so, that, so, so what you're looking at in the, in the, the very the beginning. The front end of the modeling is all the fat stuff and then you got some details. So there. in the beginning of the modeling, you're looking and saying, can, is there a possibility that if you take a plasma torch and put it into this particular client's process, would there be some sort of additional costs or damage and things. And when that's, once that's sorted out, the, end, the, ending, the ending part of the model goes into some of the other benefits, like you know, some of the ones I mentioned and, and putting some, potentially putting some value on it. So yes, the modeling contract is uh, several months and the front end being determining whether or not there's a real issue with the plasma torch. Um, and I don't think we've ever gone into a modeling right now that where people ask, uh, say, listen, we think there's going to be a problem here. Can you, can you look at it? No, it's like, can you just confirm there isn't going to be one? All right. And last question. And do you need to negotiate separately for each phase as you go through these? Models? Oh, it's one. They're not, they're not like a gazillion dollar modeling contracts. They're very sure. simple, very small things. And it's just one, one set thing. And we, we go and do the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole. Uh, all right. And uh, Politech says, thank you for all your work and in advance for your feedback. P.S. The world looks much better now being in green, and I'm much happier shareholder 
I was in red on my last post. So, uh, oh, wow. Well, it's, you know, people can see the clock behind Peter's head. So it's 235, but it's stocks at 236 in the green by 8.76%. So uh, we're still happy. Very good. George, Peter, thanks, I, I really appreciate it. This is the first time uh, back and forth. I hope people appreciated it. Um, sure. It's good to be here. And thank you. Thank you very much to all my investors and supporters and people that have taken the time. Even if they don't like the story, take the time to look at it, understand it, pose your questions, and we're here. Uh, we're here to help you get a better understanding over time. Thank you very much. No, thank you, Peter. I know this is a lot for you to do, and uh, but you know what? We've seen it time and time again on the Pyrogenesis Forum that you're creating this connection uh, with your investors, this real relationship, and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. So I'm positive everyone's going to love and appreciate so, this. So, George, and, uh, somebody asked me about this. Somebody actually wrote me and said, why don't you spend more time with the company instead of on Longoracom or answering questions? And, you know, it's simply this. Um, I was brought up a certain way. Um, you invested in my company and you, and you gave me the money directly or you had confidence to buy it in the marketplace. And, uh, and I have a responsibility to help you ask, the, you know, if you're going to give me your money in a private placement and you're asking me 10 questions, I'd answer them, right? Most, most CEOs would. Why would I forget you once I've got your money? Okay, that's not cool. That's not the way you should treat people. I mean, if you've given me the benefit of your hard-earned money, and confidence, um, and you're gonna invest some additional time in asking me a question and posing it in a certain way that makes, you know, uh, it's, not, it's not correct for me not to answer it. No. There might be a side benefit, George, you might get interested more, or, or, or that, that's a side benefit, but uh, you never know. I mean, it's, it's the right thing to do. Now, I don't know if I can keep on doing this for my whole life, I mean, as, as, com as a company expands, but a company should dedicate somebody as, as, as knowledgeable and, and passionate about the company to answer these questions. And that's, that's what I think is part of the cost of doing business. And, and I'll actually say- As my other part of the job. And I'll actually add to that, Peter, and finish it here, because you got to run. Philosophically, what you just said, 100%, not a lot of companies have that. So philosophically, you're in the right place, heart and head. But- Practically speaking, for everyone who, for anyone who was thought that, Peter actually ends up saving more time when everyone can kind of post to the forum, and then Peter can go in every couple of days or so and just post some answers because then he's only got to do it one time. Imagine how much time Peter would otherwise need in the traditional world, which is to get on the phone and repeat the same answer fourteen different times, or to repeat the same answer in an email. This way, everyone posts a question. Peter posts one answer, everyone that, sees it. So it's actually, that, actually speaking, George. more efficient. Yeah. Fundamentally, you're right. When somebody posts a question on Agoracon, particularly early days, I remember thinking, you know, if that guy has that question and he's bold enough to ask it, it's probably thousands of other people have the same question. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and rather than have people running around with a question that is unanswered or, or worse still, they're going down the wrong road. Oh, which, by the way, people have asked me, okay, is the U.S. Navy contract real or has the U.S. Navy canceled it? It's real and they haven't canceled it. I just want to make sure everybody understands. It's as real as the moon landing. <laughs> so if you don't think it exists and you think the world is flat too, good. And that's the beautiful thing about the forum and having you as the verified guy there that Instead of rocking, I won't mention it, but instead of running around other forums and list the innuendo and rumors, they can just ask. Yeah. Give them the answer, and that's great. So uh, thanks, Peter. I know you got to run. I got to really rock and roll. Yeah, you, uh, you take off. Guys, everyone at home, thank you. Post your, post your feedback on the forum. Let Peter know how we did, how we did, and looking forward to, uh, to more and more conversation with you. Thanks, George. Bye, everybody. All the best.